When you get into text-based programming, especially if you're coming from a language like Scratch, one of the hardest things to get used to is knowing how to tell the program to do something in the future. Uh, Scratch makes this quite easy because it has a lot of things going on behind the scene to help you. But when you're basically programming something by yourself, all you can do is either run something instantly, like a function, or you can save some information like a variable, for example. Uh, so it sort of becomes obvious then that what we're going to have to do is save a variable that tells the computer to do something in the future. And that's sort of what we're going to do. So for example, with these circles here, if I click on a circle, I don't want it to move immediately. I want it to move uh, after three seconds. And I've actually put a time countdown timer on this to illustrate. If I click this one, it counts down to zero and then off it flies. Likewise, I can have multiple ones all clicking down and all uh, at different times counting down to heading off. Um, so you'll notice there that each one of them, uh, when you click on them and they fly off in three seconds time, actually have a, an inbuilt secret sort of timer. Well, it's not that secret because you can see it counting down, but the, ma the main concept here is we're going to set a timer. So let's go and have a look at uh, the code in here. So just to, to give you an idea, just like in the spawning and scrolling video, uh, again, we'll have circles as um, a list, and then we will have a make circle function. Uh, now, the important thing in the make circle function is none of this stuff. Uh, the only thing I really care about for you to see here is that it has a moving equals false, because the thing that we're going to want to trigger is we're going to want to set that to true. And the second thing we're going to want is a timer. Now you might wonder why is the timer at negative one? Uh, well, just think about it. If the timer was at a pos in a positive number like 2.5, that means it's counting down and it has 2.5 seconds to go. Um, if the timer is at zero, that doesn't mean the timer is off. It means the timer is triggering, it's activated, it's finished its time, and now we are actually doing something. So we want to avoid all of that and we'll use negative one simply as a way of saying, hey, this timer isn't even on, just ignore it, okay? So that's that's what we're using negative one for. There's, there's nothing special about negative one, it's just a nice, simple uh, way that we could show that, okay? Okay, just jumping down the page here, uh, you'll see there's a function called check circle clicks. This is not really related to the timer, it's more just for this particular project, but just so you know, uh, if we actually are pressing on a circle, then the way that we uh, activate this is we set circle.timer to three. Uh, you might wonder why it has this circle.moving equals false. Uh, that's because uh, a moving circle can actually be stopped by clicking on it. So if I'm able to actually, ah, I got it. You'll see that that's what the moving circle equals false does but uh, in case you're wondering. But the main point is we start the timer. So the moment I put circle.timer equals three, it'll automatically start counting down. Uh, and I will show you how that works. Uh, so if we go into um, update circle, uh, this is the bit that does the timer. Uh, so four circle in circles. So we've got a whole bunch of 10 different circles here, and this code will run for all of them. If circle.timer, does not equal negative one, because if it does equal negative one, we wanna just ignore the timer. We don't wanna do anything with it, right? So if it doesn't equal negative one, then circle.timer minus equals 1 60th. Why 1 60th? Well, because that's how much of a second will have passed since the last update function ran. Uh, so we will wanna take uh, that amount of seconds off the timer. So if it was uh, half a second, now it's a little bit less than half a second, uh, 1 60th to be precise. Um, then after that, we want to check if the circle.timer is equal to or less than, less than or equal to, the less than is really important because it might jump over zero completely to uh, something slightly below it, zero, uh, minus 0 0.03 or something. So if it's less than or equal to zero, uh, then what do we want to do? This is where you put the code to activate whatever you want to happen at the end of the wait period. 
So circle, in my case, circle.moving equals true, but you might want to run a function explosion, sounds flying off, new enemies being spawned, all sorts of stuff could happen there. Uh, and then the final thing we're going to do is turn the timer off completely, otherwise uh, it will keep running this every frame. How do we turn it off? We set it to negative one again. Uh, so that's the basic idea of uh, how a timer works, um, and I hope that's helpful to you. Uh, this will allow you to uh, give behavior to enemies uh, that is delayed in some way. And now just a final note I will say is that if you have uh, different uh, behaviors for the enemy or the bullet or whatever and that are delayed at different times and different rates, uh, you might have multiple timers. You might call one uh, spawn timer or explosion timer or whatever. Uh, you can give them more app names.